All right, so how much solar is my system producing? I'm gonna go over basically here in October. It is October the 29th, 2023. So the month's not completely over, but I've already pulled in more than I've ever pulled in before. Um, at least that I know of because of um, the software. I haven't always had it, so I haven't been tracking it all the time. But I do have a few more panels than I normally did probably about six or eight weeks ago when I started running those. So basically what I have in my main array that's already completely set up and done and permanent is 12.6 kilowatts. And then with the other panels I have, I just got them sitting on the ground and I have them in a permanent array. So there's not gonna be the best output just laying on the ground like they are. And part of the morning, they're definitely in the shade for hours. Definitely not gonna be the, the best output that they can put out. Once I get them up on an array, I'll probably get that built in November, December timeframe, just depending on my, my work schedule. But basically that's 5.4 kilowatt hours that that array is, so total 18.1 kilowatts. So we're gonna go over my numbers since I've had that hooked up on the ground for here in October for the last 28 days, and today is day 29, so I guess part of the day today. So we already got my screen recording, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring you along and show you what my system can do. Maybe if you're interested in what your system can do, if you wanna do a DIY solar system, and you wanna know how much power you're gonna be able to pull in, this might be good information for you to have, and we can go back and kind of see, you know, what an average day is like for the system and setup I have. All right, so right here on the front, as you can see, it's 1.48 p.m., and I'm pulling in currently 13,377 watts, got 11,900 going to the battery. Of course, don't really have much running on the house right at this moment. And let's go to the totals, because that's what we really care about. And so, as you can see, the total for today, which, you know, still has several hours ago, I've already pulled in about 43 kilowatts. And this basically updates on this solar assist software every hour. So in about 11 minutes, it'll update again. And that's going to go well above, you know, in the 50s, since I'm pulling in about 13 to 14 kilowatt hours right now. And we'll go through and show you some of these days what I pulled in. Like yesterday, I pulled in 86. 76, another 76, a 82, a 87, a 83, a 67, 100.5 October the 21st. As you can see right there, that's the that's the best day that I know of that I pulled in. But you know, my batteries were pretty dead. I was charging my car. It was just an all around pretty good day. Definitely not perfect. I saw a few dips that day, so I could pull in just a little more than that on a perfect day. And of course, this is not middle of summer, so the days are definitely shorter. So for October, I mean, I think it's pretty good to pull in 100 kilowatt hours. But you can see other days that are not so good. So I got a day when I pulled in 16 kilowatt hours. You know, terrible day. <laughs> very dark, very cloudy all day. I have another one I pulled in 28. So you just have days that's not going to be great. You know, I have another one I pulled in 95. Another one I pulled in 26. But let's go down and look at the total month so far. For October, I pulled in 19,000, uh, uh, I mean 19,000. I wish I pulled in 19,000. And for the month, I pulled in 1,956 kilowatt hours, not 19,000. But pulled in 1,956 kilowatt hours so far in October. So this will be the first month that I've had where I pulled in more than 2,000 kilowatts in a month, unless something crazy and drastic happens. But, you know, between today and tomorrow, definitely should be able to pull in enough to get me over that 2,000 mark. And see, for September, I pulled in 1,746. And for the whole month of September, I didn't have the additional uh, uh, array hooked up to this main system that's sitting on the ground out here that I have now. And for part of the month, I did. So you see, I did pretty good for that month. And I didn't have solar assist hooked up for the whole month of August. I think that was for a couple of days there. So the solar assist is really helping me out to see what I'm actually pulling in and be able to track my numbers and, and, and just see overall what my system's doing and be able to track it when I'm away from home. So that's why I've been able to run the system more. I've had a lot of times where I didn't run my whole system. I had half my house running and the other half run on the grid because I didn't want to run into a problem if I was at work and not be able to fix it and my family's here and they have to try to deal with it. So, you know, for me, I just know that my family uses a lot of power and there's times that we can go over 15,000 kilowatt hours if we're not paying attention to what we're running. So what I try to have my family do is make sure they don't run a dryer and cook at the same time. And if we're not doing that, we're usually gonna be good unless I'm charging my car and I kind of keep track of that. 
And uh, if I'm charging my car and you're running a bunch of stuff in the house, of course, you're going to go over that 15000 amount. But I'm probably going to upgrade these inverters soon to have just a little more output. Or, like I've been talking about, I have an EV charging station that's completely separate. Then I want at least I have to worry about that. But we're going to see how all that works out. I'll be doing some testing soon with that. And let's go ahead and just look at some of the charts, like from today and maybe yesterday. And so for the last 24 hours, you can see how much uh, the system was pulling, how much we pull late in the evening. You know, let's go and look at the last 48 hours, maybe. So the last two days, let's refresh this thing and then you can kind of see. I mean, you see how much power my family uses, you know, from from the time we get up good to almost midnight, you know, just use a ton of power. And I actually think uh, last night, I think, yeah, I turned it off the grid some because I was I drained my batteries down so much. But you can see my battery didn't get charged back all the way yesterday, you know, because I was charging my car and some different things. So my state of charge on the battery, I think it only went up to, what, 76? Was 77 was the highest it went up to. So sometimes you just got to put your house back on the grid. My system is an off-grid system. So I don't have grid power even going into my inverters. Basically, I just turned up part of my house off and run my main part of my house on the grid and my batteries start getting low. So everything's manual. And maybe in the future, I'll get this set up where I have some different inverters and I have power going straight into them. Or I have where my charge verter is hooked up to the grid somehow and charges my batteries or a generator or whatever the case may be. Just don't have everything kind of worked out yet. I just want backup power if the grid ever goes down for any reason. It's happened to us a couple of times during hurricanes and I just want my family to be able to have power and just have normal things going on and don't have to worry about it. I have too many people at my house to be worried about trying to wash clothes and dry them and all that kind of stuff if the power's down and all that. So as you can see, um, you know, yesterday, I mean, had a pretty nice curve with the solar, you know, most of the day, you know, had a few dips here and there, but definitely a pretty good day. But my battery didn't get charged all the way because I was charging my electric car and that took a bunch of power. So then in the evening, you can see all this power that's coming out, you know, between, you know, five o'clock, you know, when the sun kind of dips down most of the way, and midnight, I mean, I'm pulling a ton of power. Like right here, 10.30 at night, I'm pulling, you know, 11.5K out, pulling 12.1 there, pulling 8.7 there, another 8 there. So if you're a house, if you're using a lot of stuff and using a lot of power, you didn't know how many kilowatt hours is coming out a day to see how big your system needs to be. So even with this 18K array, and I have 65 kilowatt hours of batteries right now. I do have another battery that I need to hook up, but I'm about to use it for a different project for a little while for some testing, and then I'm gonna put it in my system. But, you know, you're gonna have to have a lot more batteries than you probably think, unless you just don't use a lot of power. You know, a lot of people are gonna try to do, just use less power and become more efficient. I just wanna run my normal stuff, normal life, and I want my system to run it, and over time, I'll just keep uh, uh, upgrading and buying, and I'm gonna make it big enough where I don't have to worry about the thing, or at least I don't have to worry about the thing as much. But let's go back here and see what the system is pulling in. If you're interested in solar assist, you know, you go check their stuff out. I mean, I definitely like it so far. If you have an inverter that has all the stuff built in, that's great, but these grow watts, the app on them is pretty poor. That's one of the reasons I wanna upgrade. So you were pulling in 13.1, at basically about two o'clock in the afternoon, got 10,000 going into the, your batteries. So basically, as long as your batteries are not charging faster than, you know, if you have a server right batteries like I have, basically as long as they're charging in more than five hours, you know, that's gonna be less than that point uh, two C rate. I have 13 batteries. Right now I've got 10,000 something coming in. So they're still gonna be below the C rate. You're not gonna be overcharging the things. You don't want your array to be so massive in your backup battery a uh, uh, total size to be so small that it's charging way too fast. You don't want your system charging back in an hour or two because if you drain them all the way down, then charge them back in an hour or two, over time, it's gonna degrade a lot faster than if you charge slower during the day. So you want your array to be big enough where to charge your system back, 
but it's not going to charge it back too fast. A minimum, I would say, is five hours. Six hours is even better. So if you kind of can uh, make your system where to charge back in six hours and, you know, still have plenty of power, you know, to do what you got to do, that, to me, would work out best. But, you know, you got to make your own decisions, do your own research, you know. I don't claim to be an expert. I'm just a DIYer that's been messing with this stuff for a little while. So I just know more than the average person for sure. All right, so let's go ahead and wait a couple minutes. And at 2 o'clock, we'll see what these numbers come up to and see if we can get closer to that 2,000 mark that kilowatt hour mark that I'm trying to hit for the month. At least I did hit 100 kilowatt hours in one day. So, and that was in October. So if I can do it in October, I can definitely do it during the summer. And, you know, a lot of times you use a lot more power in the summer and in a, a, a deep winter when it's getting cold and your, your HVAC system's running a lot more, trying to keep your house warm. We're gonna see this winter how my system does and if it's gonna be big enough to run most of the time. You know, when you, when you have an electric car you know, you might be using 20 or 25, even 30 kilowatt hours. When you get home from work to charge a uh, car back from those batteries, you're going to need a bigger battery bank than a normal person that's just trying to run their house, especially if they don't have a huge family like I have. We have a ton of people at my house. So the wash and dryer and stuff and run it all the time. We're cooking all the time. So that's the stuff uses 240 volts. It's using a ton of power. Two o'clock. Let's see how many we pulled in for today. We pulled in 56.6 kilowatt hours here on October the 29th, 2023 at two o'clock. So we still got another, you know, two or three hours of good sun, you know, probably four hours of having some sun, but a hey, 56 kilowatt hours, not bad. A lot of people can run their whole house off of 56 kilowatt hours. If you have a smaller house and not a huge family, you know, that will probably work out for you. So this week so far, We've already pulled in 549 uh, kilowatt hours, and the day is Sunday, so you know the day is not over, but not bad for the week. So so far in the week, let's go ahead and see what that's going to average out to over seven days. So we got uh, 549 so far divided by seven. That's equal to 78 kilowatt hours a day on average, and we're definitely going to pull in a little more than that. So it's going to be probably in the 80s. That is gonna be my average for this week. So not bad at all. Let's go back and look at the charts and, and look at for the whole week, just to show you what it looks like and see if we had some bad days, good days, whatever we had. And and then and the yellow is the PV coming in. So, you know, you can see the curve when they're looking good, you know, how much power we're pulling in and when it drops off, either the batteries are already charged or, you know, it gets cloudy or whatever the case may be. So a few of these days, I think my battery was fully charged. That's why it dropped off. But, you know, what a terrible week. Because you can see it comes up on every day, you know, at least half the day. So the battery might have been fully charged at that point. So do you have a DIY solar system? If so, I want to know how many kilowatt hours you're pulling in on average daily and monthly. Hey, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. And if you don't have a system, I want to know how big of a system you want to have how much you want to pull in every month. You know, you can let me know that as well because maybe this can help somebody out by looking at the size of my system and the size that maybe you want to purchase and seeing if that's going to work out for you. I'm in North Carolina. It all just depends on your area as well and how much sun you're going to get and how bad your winters are going to be. But I think I should be able to do pretty good here in the winter. But we're going to do the numbers every month and see what they are. As you can see for this month, not bad so far. Got a couple more days or whatever, but you know, on average, you see how much I'm pulling in. And if you like this kind of video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and thanks for watching.